This past Sunday, America's largest city stopped being the sophisticated, cultured, cosmopolitan capital of the world and instead turned into the Wild West. But this time, there's no Billy the Kid, no Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, and no John Wayne to save the day. There's just a terrified family, a city on edge, and a fearful society. There was a time in our history when families would decisively settle wrongs among themselves. Frontier justice was meted out by one's kin. If you two don't mend what's wrong between you, hellfire is gonna certain rise up and consume both our families. You're talking about starting another civil war. That's what we already got. But as we advanced, we rejected vigilante justice in our society. And in exchange for our agreement not to take the law into our own hands, the government promised to protect its citizens and punish criminals. This is the social contract forged in civilized societies. But are we really civilized? As of late, it seems that lawlessness and chaos are not the exception but rather the rule, that it's every man for himself, that we have the right to avenge whatever wrongs we perceive are visited upon us, human suffering rendered irrelevant. Three Oklahoma teens kill an Australian college student just for the fun of it. Children randomly shot on playgrounds in Chicago who don't even run at the sound of gunfire. A student beat down on a school bus as the bus driver and others watch, not bothering to intervene. A Navy Yard shooter reloading to pick off a few more victims as though it were a video game. This seems to be an awful moment in our history. Right and wrong seem no longer relevant. Political correctness has replaced the scales of justice and that correctness seems always to be wrong. It's wrong to call the gunning down of our military, men and women, workplace violence when the shooter is Muslim and screams Allahu Akbar. It's wrong to blame the murder of Americans on a video instead of on the terrorists who committed it. And this week, a man with his family on a Sunday afternoon ride is surrounded by a swarm of bikers looking to take over the road for impromptu stunts that they videotape just for the thrill of it. One biker pulls in front of the driver, looks back, and deliberately brakes, causing the resulting chaos. And so the spin begins. The biker, run over by the driver, who is simply looking to flee the assault on his vehicle and family, claims he is the victim. He is riding illegally, he has no license, and he's designated by his own state as a habitual traffic offender. And how about this one? The group says they were just out for a bike ride, which is total hogwash. Most had license plates that were bogus or not visible. They were looking to shut down a major highway and threatening anyone who had the audacity to not move for them. And then they chase him and beat him down in front of his terrified family. Still, they claim they're not at fault. Accountability seems no longer relevant. Excuses are the norm. Consequences rarely imposed. But should we even be surprised? In this country, people are rewarded for not working. Many feel entitled to government assistance, even if they're home watching TV. IRS employees who target political opponents are given bonuses. Veterans Administration employees, years behind in their assessment of the claims of men and women in the military, are given bonuses. And are you angry that others are more successful than you? Why not start an Occupy Wall Street, take over a park, interfere with traffic, rape a few women, and cause the taxpayers millions in cleanup? In Washington, no exception. 
It's total chaos in this latest government shutdown. The president and his administration accusing the opposing party of terrorism, having bombs strapped to their chest and holding a gun to the heads of Americans. Accountability? The president himself has never answered whether he issued the order to protect Americans in Benghazi. And there seems to be no conscience anymore, no shame, a ruthless disregard for fellow human beings. And with the cloak of anonymity that the Internet provides, people bully to the point where their targets commit suicide. It's as if there are no social restraints. That herd mentality excuses all antisocial and destructive behavior. The lack of civility, accountability, and responsibility always seems accompanied by the apologists, the excuses, and a sense of entitlement. And you can always rely on the ultimate apologist, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, that explains away all antisocial behavior as a mental problem. It's time to stop deceiving ourselves. We are living in a time of lawlessness and chaos. We want to believe in the goodness of each other, but none of the social restraints are ever imposed, and therefore they are simply ignored. It's time to stop being politically correct and start being morally right before we lose every semblance of the civilized society that we fought so hard to create. Now, I'm a pretty tough New Yorker, and I'm worried. And if I'm worried, you need to be worried. Coming up, new developments in the biker gang attack. You're not going to believe who was part of that group. And I head out on the open road. You're not going to want to miss this one. Party, we can do what we want. It's a party, we can say what we want. It's a party, we can love who we want. We can kiss who we want. We can see who we want.